Hello, and welcome to my podcast, Good Grief. My name is Dr. Christine Malone, and in this podcast, we talk about trauma, tragedy, and survival. In each episode, I will interview someone that has gone through grief in some way, and we will discuss the impact it has had on their life. By sharing these stories, we hope that others won't feel alone should they be going through similar situations. Enjoy. Okay, guests, thank you so much for joining me today. My guest is going to tell us the story about um, how she lost her brother in a very sudden way. So, guest, if you would like to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about what happened with your brother. Sure. Hi, audience. My name is Tamara Fox. And on March 18th, 20, actually, sorry, let me back up. <laughs> My name is Tamara Fox. I'm a health and wellness coach. And on March 18th, 2022, my 25 year old brother was suddenly killed in a car accident in Texas. He was crossing the street and hit by a driver and the driver was not drunk and not distracted. He was not texting, you know, as a gentleman in the car with his family and he stopped and got out of the car as well as two other drivers did. And my brother was dead upon um, impact. Wow. Yeah, that's um, horrible, both for your brother, your family, and for that driver. For heaven's sake, that would be awful. So, so um, tell us how how did you find out about it, and then how you reacted once you heard that news? Yeah, I live in Colorado, and I'll never forget. So it happened on a Friday evening. I'll never forget that Saturday morning. I had actually just moved into a brand new home two days prior, and I woke up that Saturday morning and saw my name, my mom's name on my phone, like she was calling me and immediately my heart stopped because I was like, my mom does not call me this early. I think it was like six or 7 AM in the morning on a Saturday. I was like, my mom never calls me this early and my heart stopped and I answered the phone and the words out of her mouth are, were our Isaac is gone. And I'll never forget just feeling this immense rush of pain come over my body and sadness. And I kept saying to her, what? No, like, I was just in shock and disbelief. And the only other time I can remember my body feeling that same level of pain is when I was 19. And I know I talk about it in another podcast story with you when I went through something very traumatic, just this pain immediately rushed over my body. So it was so unexpected. Um, Isaac was 25. He was living in Nashville. He was in Texas for a wedding, which is why he was in Texas. Um, He had his whole life ahead of him and he was the most wonderful person, if not the most wonderful person I've ever met in my life. He was full of joy and kindness and he was always happy and smiling. And I've never met anybody who had a bad thing to say about him. In fact, over 300 people showed up to his celebration of life. So it was probably some of the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. And I mean, I'm sure you can hear it in my voice. It's still something to this day. That's pretty raw. Yeah, no, I completely understand that. I take it. You two were, were very close. Yeah. So I actually, so I live in Colorado. I moved to Nashville where Isaac lived in uh, 2020 in the middle of COVID because I wanted to live somewhere new. So I lived there for just over a year and that Isaac and I are six years apart. So we grew up as children, very a pretty large age gap being that I was six years older. And it wasn't until, and then when he went to college, he went to college at a state, he went to college at Mississippi State. So we didn't get to be in the same state as adults. And it wasn't until I lived in Nashville that we really got to form this wonderful sibling relationship as adults and spend a lot of really great quality time together as adults, which I loved. We got to go to dinner or lunch all the time and just, he would come over and hang out or I would go to his place and hang out. And it was so wonderful. And in so many ways, I am so grateful for that time in Nashville and whatever prompted me to randomly move to Nashville without ever having visited. I'm grateful for because I got such wonderful time with my brother. I do have three other brothers and um, who two of which are much closer in age to Isaac. So they all grew up very, very close. But I, again, with that age gap, once we were adults, it was like our relationship truly got to blossom, truly got to, to grow much, much deeper. And again, he was, I, I mean, there's nothing horrible I can say about him and that anybody could say about him because he was so special and so wonderful. And I'm just thankful he was my brother and I got to know him. 
Oh, it sounds like it's just wonderful that you had that time with him as well. I can I can hear that that's something very special to you. So I know from um, uh, the previous podcast interviews we've done that you had lost your father just a couple of years before um, your brother was killed and, um, and, and your beloved pet as well. So I, I'm curious to hear um, your thoughts on kind of the, how that compounded with all those losses within such a short period of time. Sure. So my dad died April 4th, 2020, which I know we talk about in another podcast. And then my German shepherd, Akira, who I had gotten because of a trauma that I had when I was 19, which we talk about in another podcast, died March 21st, 2021. So within a two week span of each other, within three years, I had lost my dad, my dog, who was my security. And then one of my brothers who I loved more than, and everybody loved more than anything, Um, In addition, I I won't go into too much detail, but one of my best friends was killed on August 3rd, 2022. So it was four very powerful and prominent deaths within a three-year span, and it felt like the world was against me. Um, I'll never forget after Isaac died, it felt like the world was just cruel, that the world could somehow take a 25-year-old amazing, amazing human from this earth for absolutely no reason. Like he had done nothing wrong in his life and for him to just be gone was hard. So it felt like the world was cruel. And then of course, five months later, one of my best friends was killed right as I felt like I was coming up for some air. So it was not only compact in that three year span, but as grief, they say oftentimes, takes about six years to kind of recover from. I don't think you fully ever recover from grief, but I think after six years, the pain is not as prominent. It's not as as big. It's not at the surface as much. Um, and for me, it was, you know, my dad died in 2020. And then right as I felt like, okay, I'm, I'm getting used to my life without my dad. It had been a year, my dog Akira passed. And so I was back in that process again of, how do I learn to live without her here? And what does that look like? And how do I continue to go on? And then right as the year mark was about to approach, Isaac was killed. And that one, again, it was like, okay, how do I learn to live again without him here? How do I continue to move on and be a happy, loving, amazing individual? Because that's what he would want me to be and learn to be at peace with his death in a way that I can't be angry or mad at the driver or blame anyone or anything. But at the time I did, I was really angry with the, like the world more than anything, the universe um, for taking him. And so it took me quite a bit of time. And I mean, again, it's been just over years, a year. So there are still moments that I get upset and I get angry and I get sad because he's gone, but I've also learned to find peace in it um, in the best ways that I can, because it, it was so much at once Um, And there still are moments where I'm worried, you know, who, what, who's, what's going to happen to the next person next. Like I'm worried someone else is going to be gone. There's times I talk about it with my coach all the time, because as a coach, I also have a coach and I say, I'm constantly waiting for the next shoe to drop or the next person to die. Unfortunately, it's the reality. I'm, my brain is still processing after losing four very impactful people, well, slash one dog um, in three years of time, my body in so many ways and my mind in so many ways, even though I know that's not going to happen and I'm hoping and wishing that doesn't happen. There's still so many days that I'm worried that something bad is going to happen just because so much bad did happen. Yeah. And your story is making me think back um, of a book that I read, actually somebody recommended it to me. Um, when I had experienced a loss and it's called when bad things happen to good people by an author, his last name is Kushner. And the, the book is about, he starts with, he lost his three-year-old son. And the, the purpose of the book is really to talk about, you know, when you have horrible things happen to you, especially when more than one things happened and you're sitting there thinking, well, why me? Why is this happening to me? Why would I lose four people that mean so much to me in such a short period of time? Um, I would recommend that book if you can pick it up and, and read it. It just really helps to see that, you know, the world isn't really out to get us. It's just really crappy things happen sometimes. And um, yeah, you become yeah. a better person at the end of it if, 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 if you can. So there's going to happen. So yeah, tell me. I, oh, just a comment on that quickly. So 
Um, what an interesting piece of advice I was given from some, uh, a person in my support circle shared to me, shared with me that their lot, their deaths were not, were their story, were their path. So it, to that concept of like, why are bad things happening to me? She helped me reframe it into these aren't happening to you. These are experiences you're going through my brother dying, my dad dying, one of my best friends dying, my dog dying that is their path and their story. And it's, it's not because of me or any of that, like happening to me, it's just experiences that I'm unfortunately having. So she helped me to reframe it and it's not happening to you. It's actually happening to them. And you're just experiencing that loss. That's a great point. Thank you for sharing that. So I know you do your coaching, you've mentioned it. So can you tell us a bit about uh, the coaching that you do and um, how that not only impacts you, but your clients? Yeah. So I'm a health and wellness coach and I work with a variety of clients to help them get unstuck. I, my, my, the name of my business is Awaken Empowerment and I started it with the goal to help other others never feel alone because as I've mentioned, I've, I've been through quite a bit since I was 19 years old. I'm 31 now. And I felt really alone in a lot of those experiences. So as a health and wellness close coach, excuse me, we look at each individual holistically. So mind, so the the mental piece, the physical piece, financial, spiritual, et cetera. And we understand and unpack what they want to look differently and how they want that to look differently. And they're really, again, driving that um, progress forward, but I'm there to help them and if need guide them in in different ways to get them to where they want to be and truly get unstuck while feeling seen and not alone. And the work has helped me in so many ways. Um, Helping people has been huge for me because when I would go to therapists, they would look at me and just not know what to say often when I would share what I've experienced and they couldn't get personal and real with me about even if they had experienced something similar to what I had, they couldn't tell me because of the clinical practice and By being a coach, which is why I went the coach route instead of a therapist route, I can allow my clients to not really not feel alone by sharing what I've been through and helping them feel that empathy, that true empathy of, I understand, even if I haven't been through that experience and I don't know your exact emotions or exact pain, I I have sympathy for them in so many ways of, I know what it feels like to go through something difficult, whether that's loss or trauma or et cetera. Um, as since I am not a therapist though, I don't work with clients who are working through, you know, something on the more clinical end. I do work with many clients who are often seeing a therapist and then they'll come to me in addition to the therapist, because as a coach, we, we work on the future moving forward goals, those type of items where therapists work on getting through a a past situation. So I, I'm always happy to work hand in hand with a therapist, with my clients, but I don't work with clients who are like, Hey, I need to overcome my anxiety or, Hey, I need to overcome depression. That is more appropriate for a therapist, or even if they do need to overcome grief again, that's more appropriate for a therapist, but I can be part of that support circle for them in other ways of their, their journey, their life journey and progress. Yes. That really is a great point in that, you know, as a therapist can't really share or shouldn't ethically share their own stories with their clients, but as a coach, you can. And I think that probably gets you a, um, people will see, well, yeah, I, I'm going to be able to do this thing because, well, look at my coach has done and, and that is inspirational and helps them feel like they're going to be okay. Or they're going to get unstuck as you commented it. So that's, that's great. It sounds like it's a great spot for you to be in and your clients are fortunate to be working with you. So is there anything else you'd like to add for this episode? I think the only thing I would add that I, I constantly share So there was a phrase that one of my brother's close friends came, came up with after he passed and it's love like Isaac. Cause my brother's name was Isaac. And so we have wristbands and t-shirts and sweatshirts that all say love like Isaac. So that's just the message I want to continue to share in Isaac's honor is he had the most loving heart and the biggest heart. And if we could all love like Isaac, this world would be a much better place. So yeah. Thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, thank you again for being my guest. It's been wonderful to talk with you today. Thank you.
Thank you for listening to this episode of Good Grief. To hear more about my personal story, please pick up a copy of my book, The Day I Became the Spider Killer, a memoir of trauma, tragedy, and survival, available in paperback, Kindle, and Audible via Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and other online book retailers.